Excuse me, Abrika, you are bully, Bataka. It says, greetings, welcome to the village of Bataka. Um, the hurricane of Maria was a very, um, one of the most experience I had, but challenging and um, to me personally. I had experienced other hurricanes before, Hurricane David in Dominica in 1979, Hurricane Ivan in 2004 in Grenada, and then um, we, of course, has a very impact, less impact than the rest of Dominica in the um, um, tropical storm of, Mar of Erika, but we had a very big impact of the Hurricane Maria in the Dominica, especially Calinago territory, and the reason being that um, it was at night, and, um, and, and many of us say, well, praise God, it was at night, because if it was at day, uh, many people would have died or injured because people would have tempted to run or seeing things that would cause them to have a heart attack <laughs> or something else. Um, but um, it, for me, it was, it, it was very challenging in the sense that, um, honestly, that um, not much 100% preparation was done for the hurricane. My mind was focused on other things. I am the cultural officer working on the Ministry of Cardinal Affairs. We had just had a program on the 17th or the 16th Kalinago Week, which it was all under my portfolio to have a well-organized Kalinago Week. So we started on the 16th and on the 17th, um, we had a spots. The hurricane was still close by. And um, we, of course, um, was monitoring it. We were listening to the news and we thought that it would not be as bad. Um, of the Prime Minister is the one I remember very saying it. Don't just take this hurricane very seriously. I mean, one of all the time he was on the radio, but I, I do think many of us take it very seriously. I personally, um, honestly, did not take it very seriously to an extent, but very seriously. It's only on the morning um, of the 18th that I started um, reinforcing. I'd buy other things, but reinforcing windows, um, blocking holes as necessary, and even in the night. Um, um, my wife was busy um, getting stuff inside, um, um, storing dry goods, dry clothes into containers and in garbage bags. Well, these things we, we, we do all the time um, when we hear we come in to store our dry clothes. Uh, but come to the preparation of um, um, hurricane shutters and all those different reinforcement there. Uh, it was not until the morning of the 18th that I really started putting those. I, I had those already, some of them on hand. Um, putting extra tall bowls to the windows and even during um, the night, six o'clock, we were still doing things upstairs, nailing there and there and then hoping that. And by the time it was about eight, nine, ten, um, that I get a message from my friend in um, St. Kitts that he messaged me and told me, look out, that is coming over very terrible. And then we say, okay. We had um, another family uh, with us, so my son and three others stayed downstairs, which we had a down basement, and we were upstairs in the main house. My wife and her sister, which was sick, and myself, three of us. And we were up doing, um, preparing while those downstairs were having fun because they're young people. They had never seen maybe a terrible hurricane, so having fun and you know, looking at trees and see where it is coming during the course of the day. And then we were inside that house and then when it start blowing we start the water was coming inside um everybody my my wife sister saying oh, they is leaking down there said this it will always wet inside the way we're waiting we'll get wet what you want to do is that just it doesn't get worse than that but waiting we have to get us prepare yourself we are going to get wet so we start moving around then after a while when the windows started really pong inside and then moving out by himself. There was a like a spirit, some other hands trying to unlatch those tower bolts, pulling them out, quitting the window, and then the latches going like somebody was pulling them out. And um, eventually, um, was running from room to room. And then when I went to one room, I saw that there was no galvanage. I didn't hear it. I just saw empty. So I didn't alarm anybody. I just go back. <laughs> And I told my wife and this, I think we can stop doing the preparation. Now it's time to look for a safe, somewhere safe to hide. Now is survival time, <laughs> honestly. So, um, I showed them where to stay, where we would have gone and hide on the bed and the corner there. 
and we stay for a while there and while I was looking other else to see what is the other option in case because now we are trapped inside. It's too late to go outside because outside they had two other structures outside where they smash. We can hear the bottles, we can hear the galvanage and everything crashing on the outside. And then we we decided that we we're going to see one place and I, I honestly I I didn't we there was no alarm. Um, we communicate just what we had to communicate among ourselves. I suffered from some um, hypertensive. I, I decided not to get myself excited too much, so I, I decided to play the calm game. So I remained very, very calm during that time. I, I remained calm and then everybody was praying in their heart. I went and I think everybody was saying a prayer. I said, God, this is it right now. So you do your will. So when um, this part of this house, the, the, the eastern end broke, and it went inside and it, sat, it pong a door open and then the, the wind force start rocking the house inside. So we, we, um, we run on the table, the exhaustion of the table. So everybody says, get on the table. And we held three of us under this table. And I tell them, put your feet inside, put your head inside because there will be object. There will be object coming our way. So just don't look at any of the roof gone, we never see any roof. We cannot, I cannot witness where we saw, we can see well, I, I saw a galvanage or a rafter went. We cannot see that at all. We just know when we look up, we saw when the lightning flash, you could see yourself. There was nothing to say, well, like you say panic, this one is growing in excitement, there was nothing else. Um, so we stayed there. Um, the boys, the people downstairs were trying, we hearing noise below, a lot of noise below. And then, but that was a real panic. There was, there was one of our main mistakes that we did not, we did not come together as a group. So some of the dogs said some of the dogs. So the dogs said was panicking for us, and we were panicking for them now. <laughs> so um, we stay, and then um, I heard a noise below. My boy was trying his best to hear and respond because we remained mute. We, we hide and we remain silent. And then our boy was getting concerned that we were, he said we die. He said we did. So something must happen because they hear only debris. So we die upstairs. So, Anyway, I stayed and then the knock, I hid the knock in, so my wife shout and tell him, you cannot come inside, we already, it's so dangerous to be up there, so stay below. I'm saying to myself, well, why they don't use the bed as a barrier? Because there are two grown up boys that they could use something as a barrier down there, because, and we use our table as a barrier. And I stay strong, and I said, ladies, hold strong, because that is our only safety at the table. And um, just watch your legs, because objects might come your way. Until finally, I decided there was a silence and I decided but I decided to move downstairs. Then my wife held me and told me I couldn't go because it's too dangerous. Um, by the time the whole wind force had already shook everything already. The library, books, um, your city, everything is making one, everything jumping. The, whole, the inside there is just like everything in two, just spinning. You just cannot believe what situation you were in. So um, eventually I got a chance and I said, I want to see Dong. I just want to be downstairs <laughs> to see what happens. So I passed through the door and went to the back window and I knock very casually, no excitement, trying just to keep myself quiet. I knock and then I said, are you guys all right down there? <laughs> then my boy came out and he embraced me. Daddy, are you? <laughs> that was the emotion part of it because he thought I'd die. Then I told him they were right and I said, I'm going back to see my other guests upstairs. And then he said, no, 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 come down and meet us, come down and meet us. So we start and we went down. But it was the, the wind force had already done, already. So we went up downstairs and um, we were all getting wet. See, the damage was done. This pit, part of the, the kitchen we had gone, water was coming inside. And now there was rain, 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 rain. And we were in a water log below. Luckily for me, I had some suitcase downstairs with jackets, with some clothes below so we could keep ourselves warm. And then um, we had a stove below. I went back to get the still in there, we make some coffee, about 12.30, we were already making coffee. And then um, we started getting, seeing lights from the outside and realized that my navy house has completely blown off, my mother's house get through, my brother's house close by gets smashed down, and close by is this a concrete structure which is like the main shelter that people went inside. My two families got inside there for shelter. And then we had to look on my other, um, friend who stayed with us family to go and see the structure and then move out. My son went out and watched and, and um, in the wind you could see what happening. Um, for me it, it was so shocking that you would just stay and watch, don't have much to say. 
I, I, it does not much for me to say, looking around and just thanking the great spirit that nobody was injured, nobody get a single scratch. There's nothing um, too um, really alarming to say, well, okay, uh, cry about anything because you just know from your heart to heart, it is done and we are, we are alive. And the only thing we could say, well, we are alive and um, looking at what should have been done. But even though we had the best, not the best, even though we had, we, we had prepared for a limit of time, um, that would still would have gone because um, there's only so much you could do. I mean, what else could you put on the, on the, on the galvanage? Then it's nailed down, they will take it down. But when you go after, it's okay, we'll make sure the shutters are broken. Hurricane dice would have been, would have saved us. The building, but maybe not totally, it was shocked. So when windows when, when get splash and then we had to find ourselves um, getting our pieces, pieces together, um, washing clothes, putting clothes to dry because even the clothes in the plastic that we, we, we had, we had um, packed earlier on, water get into it and all soaked down. So we all had a very limited amount of dry clothes. So the whole place was littered with debris and clothes spreading there and there and, you know, just turning around to adjust yourself to, to, to what was the reality of life. <laughs> One of the first things was shelter. I think there was a quick move into get tarpaulins and that to save my life because uh, it, it, was, it was kind of not um, done, maybe distribution, we could talk about the distribution and how it was managed, but I think the response for, for tarpaulin, which was the immediate need at that time, came quite quick after um, because um, we got it about a few um, days, but you know, to get transported down and to regate it. So people get on that list, people get a, a sense of um, the shelter, which was the first tarpaulin thing. The other response was food security, and uh, that was a very big issue over here because um, we grew things here not much that could last for so cooking and rely mostly on the shops for, for rice and flour and all these different foods. Um, so, food um, security was a part of it for some people. Uh, particularly in my house, we grew a lot of our food. We had a lot of pumpkin planting and uh, tiny years during that time. So it wasn't much of an issue for us. But I know if other people like, they were already hungry. The number three already hungry because there was, the shops was totally uh, crashed down. What was not um, crashed was looted. So food security was one, was one of those. And then, um, so personally I stayed here for some days here until I was summoned to get to the distribution area to help distribute. And um, there was also a quick response for assessment, but even assessment um, was made earlier. I, I don't think that the response to the assessment was quickly done. I mean, the assessment was made. I think Cinema was the first one online doing very quick response of what, what was the assessment. But my main disappointment is what happened after that. It took a lot of time. The coordination, open, I can understand. I just cannot tell fairly a, a very good um, story. Um, from fact, what I can just maybe go about, but the real fact and say, well, okay, this was what they did and that is what come. Um, so I think that was very slow in coming, so I can um, show that um, whoever did the tarpaulin with a quick response, um, we get, of course, a quick response from the neighboring islands, whoever sent um, food, um, water, that was, uh, that was the immediate, immediate thing across. Um, our our respondent preparedness towards health, uh, what you call first responder, was not to the best. It, it wasn't activated, it wasn't coordinated properly, so that has to be looked into where we can um, secure uh, what you call uh, the emergency responders in each hamlet and where we can refine emergency um, shelters, preparation of emergency shelters. Right now, we don't have emergency shelters in here, and we have, we have to rely, rely on our neighbors that have a stronger house to that, and even that is not, I don't think. The, 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 the most um, lip service is being given um, to an extent, but actually responding by doing the right thing is not coming, is not coming forth, to my opinion. It, it's a lot of stuff, you don't even have to be different places. I think that have, it has some things that have not been done. I mean, uh, one of the, uh, I must, the, the response towards shelter, which I didn't touch on, was very much by cinema's um, thing with, with um, the galvanized first set of zinc coming in. 
I mean, the way it was done, we, we were promised zinc and we promised other material that the zinc was there, um, the bilizian was there. They actually couldn't do what they was intended to do because they said the whole time there and what they intended to do, they couldn't do it. So they end up doing assessment. But anyway, the, 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 the intention is very good because the zinc we got till now, apart from a few people who got other zinc otherwise, these are the only one that circulate and that is on you can see that it's on people's roofs. So, so we're very thankful for that effort. And I, didn't, I haven't got one, but I think the people who, who got it, some people help themselves by moving out of the tarpaulin and to get themselves something more uh, and permanent over their head. So while, while it is, it's, some people um, bother us, it is not the best quality and because they promise other things, but if you pass now, there are about 99% houses that are not very, maybe it's not safe for a hurricane, but for shelter for the time being from the elements is made from that effort. Some people is better, for some people it's worse. For some people who did not have nothing, I think they, they capitalize on the situation and they have something. For people who had things, people invested. I invest 24 years into my house, which is unfinished. It is my sweat and blood. We live in a community where we don't get loans from the bank. We live in a commune, um, community, communal um, setting, and you can get collateral from the bank. What you build is from your own sweat and blood. So when you go through all that and you lose out that, you were 24 years behind them. I have to start from almost from scratch to build myself a structure. You know, even I have the will building it, I don't have the financial uh, um, backup to do that. Right now, it costs me so much money. I have all my material there and I need money to pay the laborers to put the house down. So then I set back. Um, so it's for some people who have, it's, it's really, uh, it's not, every patient is not the same. Some people are very happy that that is happening. Um, I've seen situations where people's houses was not too very much damaged, but they were the ones that looked after. Some people have, they, they, they have lost everything in flat and not much because they are still not yet find solution for those houses who are completely blown off. They are solution for roofs and other things. So some people, um, even their houses presently they had, their houses are weakened by the shaking and they bring, the, 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 the galvanized nails, you know. So, though the structures are there, but it is not as strong as it used to be. Um, people are still traumatized. I mean, if you get a heavy wind now, people hit the tarpaulin, you know, the sun with the tarpaulin, a galvanized sky, it, it, it makes your heart bump. <laughs> Warning of the hurricane is just, I mean, we take a lot of things for granted, you know. I, I think um, most of us, that had, let's see, a TV at home. You could put in a weather channel, you could listen to weather forecast, and then how many millibars, how many um, miles off and conditions. So some of us take time to listen to that. They, 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 they call a man that's listen to radio, and you know if it's going to rain or how you're going to come. You don't have to look in detail. So he just want to know all details coming through. Um, but I think generally the radio gives you that type of thing. It is left to if the mechanism is being done at community level where you have local groups to sensitize people and then our link here was communication to have and I, and I make I make that observation already with people that where you have you have mobile phone it's not working we don't have a ham radio situation you don't have it but if we have a megaphone or, or, or mega mic um, something you can use in community because simple, simple news that where is water distribution, those who are injured can go to A, B, but if that is put in place before this season and then you have a chain of command where those things can happen, then people are, are more comfortable or not comfortable. So they will know in case I have to run there. You make your mind whether you want to run there. You will decide to stay. But if you stay, I think there must be um, some assessment in personal housing because right now people looking at only roofs and whatever and busy to put roof over the head is that structure strong enough and I think we were looking at it before this, this structure strong enough other things and looking at other elements that will affect the people during the maybe three or four hours while they are indoors and even after that in case of emergency in case of injury how are we going to manage that? Who's going to cover transportation? Who is in the immediate area that is strained into emergency um, response? Um, so they can, you can take care of some people. 
Um, there, there are also the question of sanitation, uh, which you have um, a lot of big toilets uh, around still, and, and then you have water, mosquitoes breeding and everything else. So this is a whole form of education that have, can be done at the community level. So when it's coming now, we we thankful what was happening, but we are in a most venerable than before, both physically, mentally, and everything else, because people are still not comfortable at all. Um, physically, structures are not built. Uh, a lot of people waiting for zinc over their houses. Um, they distribute a lot of um, material which is not on the houses, they are under the houses. They're still waiting because people just rely on the political system to do things for them. So uh, less and less people are doing things for themselves, they wait on the system to do things for them. Um, so while uh, the, on the government side they will say, okay, there is so much million of dollars being distributed in material, the structures are not up, are not safe. Um, we promise the people that use the houses as a hurricane shelter to give them reinforcement and, and help. That is not forthcoming. The people are very frustrated about that because they say, well, if you promise that I should come. So this, the, the system itself is very slow in, in, into implementing what they say is going on. And it's a matter of proper coordination from the ground, people in the right place, people doing the right thing. And so that the, the community follows, the communication still has been clear on what everyone is doing. You see your next neighbor is getting a good house, you see did you sell doing it, the other one doing it. And some people have that and it's very confusing. Uh, and it, it's really um, heartbreaking for some people to say, well, we're all humans, why can't we treat it on, on, on an equal level? We in a democratic system, we all vote once. Why does somebody get so much favors because they are more red and are less red, or blue, more blue and less blue? I think on a death level, it has its issues. It has its underlying issues, which would not, you know, hate on a national level, but on the lying community, the human relationship below, it happens and it affects us.